Good morning po sa lahat ng criminology students in various regions in Mindanao, Visayas, and Luzon. In the previous criminology licensure examination, ang pinakamadugo po ng mga questions came out usually in the major area criminal sociology. Although there are a lot of subjects involved in that area, but according to the confessions and testimonies coming from the takers, most of them failed in criminal sociology because per experience, most of the questions that came out in criminal sociology were taken from criminological research and statistics. So in this episode, what we are going to do is to review or i-reacquent po natin ang ating sarili on what are the necessary information that we can utilize in the future criminology licensure exam. So para po maintindihan natin kung ano ang criminological research and statistics, let us begin by understanding again what is research or what is the application of the word research in criminology. So, when you go to the library and borrow a book, okay, and in that book you want to find out the types of crimes, or let us say a definition on every type of crime, or you go to the internet, you go to google.com, and in the browser you, you search for the types of crime. So when you do browsing for information at the internet or by the time you go to the library and read books in order to answer your assignments, what you are doing is not necessarily a research. So I repeat, when you browse information from the internet or you go to the library and find out the meanings of crime or the types of crime, what you are doing is not research, but instead, you call it as literature review. Ano po ang tawag? Literature review. So in the word examination, if this, uh, if this area comes out or this information comes out, like um, do you call browsing information from the internet as a research? The answer should be no. Okay? Because in the context of criminology, when we say research, this refers or this involves scientific investigation on a particular phenomenon. Okay? So when we say phenomenon, is this refers to a particular occurrence. Okay? And the phenomenon is something or the nature of the phenomenon is something that is not yet discovered. For example, you want to discover the cure or the treatment for cancer. In that case, that can be called as research. You want to find out the, the main causes or the genesis of crimes. Like say, for example, crimes of passion. You want to find out the causes why people commit crimes of passion. In that case, what you are doing is research. So again, when you browse information from the internet or you look for terms or you copy, all right? You copy or you paraphrase statements from books. What you are doing is not research because research involves scientific investigation on a particular phenomena. So, if you apply research in criminology or in criminal justice, ang tawag po dyan is criminological research. So let us review again. When we say research, that involves scientific investigation on a particular phenomenon. And sometimes the nature of this phenomenon is not yet discovered. Okay? Such shall be called as research. But when you apply research in the area or in the context of criminology and criminal justice like say for example you want to find out the the, the crime causation you want to find out the lived experiences of the 
kidnappers or the lived experiences of 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 battered women in that case since it involves crime already and crime can be part of the study of criminology or criminal justice ang tawag po dyan is criminological research so again when research is applied in the context of criminology or criminal justice like you want to discover or to establish facts about causation of crime in that case that area shall now form part under what we call as criminological research bucket by criminological what do you mean by criminological we say criminological because we tend to discover facts relative to the nature of crime as applied to research we ha we have now criminological research so what you can see on your screen right now are basically the goals or the purposes of research like say for example discovering new facts or to answer problems which are partially solved or to improve existing techniques like say for example you want to you want to find out if there if you can innovate something relative to fingerprint identification or to develop new instruments and product to satisfy the researcher's curiosity find answers to queries by means of scientific myths all of these belong to what we call as the goals all right the goals or the purposes of research now sa lahat ng criminology students let us put in our mind that research are not only classified into two three four or five Napakarami pong types, marami pong classification or categories of research. And usually, if you know these categories, if you are familiarized po sa mga classification of research, okay? From the uh, from from the first category up to the last category, I believe in taking the criminology licensure examination, the questions may become very easy for you to answer if again you familiarize yourself with the classification of research now my appeal to all criminology students or to those persons who are review reviewers who will be taking the future criminology licensure examination please i need you to familiarize po sa lahat ng classification of research because if you familiarize yourselves with this one i believe all right i believe that in the future criminology exam these questions that me came out that may come out relative to research or to this classification may become very easy so let us start po uh, on the first category all right first classification of research according to purpose all right according to purpose now research according to purpose are classified into three one is predictive or prognostic research two is directive research three is illuminative research so let us understand the first the second and the third types of research according to the purpose so when we say predictive or prognostic research, it has the purpose of determining the future operation of the variables under investigation with the aim of controlling or redirecting such for the better. By the way, guys, we will be discussing independent variables, dependent variables, moderating variables on the later on the later uh, on the later discussions so the word predictive in here connotes future so in the board examination sometimes synonyms can be something that can help you pinpoint the correct answer so when you say predictive that is that connotes future so when we say predictive research that refers to determining the future operation of a particular variable under investigation like say for example you want to find out a close 
statistical connection between the characteristic of a student and you tend to predict uh, based on the characteristic of the student you want to predict the educational outcome so let's say for let us say if a student is disciplined your prediction might be higher grades if the students do not have discipline your prediction might say the student or the students might have lower grades so again we call that one as predictive or prognostic research now when we say directive research on the other hand this determines what should be done based on the findings to remedy an unsatisfactory condition if there is any for example like say you want to find out the lived experiences of drug surrenderies so once you have the findings what you what you did was or what you do is to propose an intervention plan okay or to propose a the improvement of a rehabilitation plan based on the findings or based on the 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 the, the conclusions that you got out from the research so basically we call it as directive research illuminative research on the other hand is concerned with the interaction of the components of the variable being investigated by showing the connections so when we say illuminative research this refers to connections for example you say is there a relationship between uh, between gender and uh, educational attainment is there a relationship between the profile of the respondents and his eagerness to learn in the criminology topic? We call that one as illuminative research. So basically, when we say when we say according to the purpose types of researches, we are referring to predictive, directive, illuminative. So ano po ibig sabihin ng predictive? Future operation. Directive. To remedy a particular unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory condition based on the findings. When you propose solution, when you propose an intervention plan, or when you propose a program to improve, okay, to improve a specific um, initiative, we call it as directive research. Illuminative relationship, okay, relationship or connection between one variable to the other relationship between gender and learning relationship between gender and grades relationship between uh, um, attitude or personality and the probability to commit crime tawag ana is illuminative research now again cadets make sure po na maintindihan ang lahat ng definition sa lahat ng classification of researches. Okay? Para when you take the board examination po in the future, if the questions is relative to uh, this field, automatically you can pinpoint the answer. Again, as I have told you a while ago, marami po tayong terms, marami po tayong types in researches. So right now, we will move to researches classified according to the goal so we have another three ona basic or pure research pangalawa applied research and the last one is multi-purpose research so when you say basic or pure research this is done for the development of theories and principles this is conducted for the intellectual pleasure or learning much of this kind of research has been done in psychology and sociology for example exploring the process or what processes was being used by the largest uh, municipal agencies for psychological pre-employment screening of police officer candidates so we call it as basic or pure research you want to find out which municipalities have the highest prevalence of drugs we call it as very basic research you want to find out whether gender or whether between male and female what 
what specific gender or sex has more probability in committing um, in committing um, theft or robbery. Or we call it as basic or pure research. So the purpose of pure or basic research is merely on intellectual pleasure or learning. So meaning you just want to find out the basic information of a particular a particular uh, nature or a particular phenomenon. Next one is applied research. So applied research, this is the application of the results of pure research. So this is testing the efficacy of theories and principles. It is concerned with the acquisition of new information for the purpose of developing or to develop the scholarly discipline or field of study in which the research is being conducted. So, for example, you want to test about the theory on self-control. Because according to self-control theory, those individuals who have less self-control has more probability to commit crimes rather than, rather than those individuals who have higher level thereof. So, by testing, getting a population and you test the veracity or you want to test whether such theory is applicable in this population, what you are doing is what we call as applied research. Now, the third one is multi-purpose research. So, the same multi-purpose research is, this is the scientific inquiry into the issue or problem that could be both basic and applied research. So, a combination between basic and applied research is called as multi-purpose research. Let us say, for example, like say, level of job satisfaction among criminologist professors. So, it can be considered as a multi-purpose research because from the basic pers perspective, the data may simply... Um, describe how of officers or how criminologists professors perceive satisfaction with uh, uh, with different aspects of their jobs becoming descriptive in nature so however the same findings could be used um, to evaluate the 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 criminologist professors by examining those areas where satisfaction is the lowest and leading to efforts to determine or to improve this uh, yeah, so basically we call it as multi-purpose research. So again, according to the goal, we only have three basic, okay, for intellectual learning or intellectual pleasure, applied research. This is the application of the results of pure research. The combination of pure research and basic research is, uh, and a combination of basic or pure research and applied research is what we call as multiple purpose research now another classification of research is according to the level of investigation so according to the level of investigation we have four exploratory descriptive uh, the other one is experimental and the last one is the last one is explanatory research now let us also discuss this one by one when we say exploratory from the word explore meaning when you heard the word explore meaning there is still something that is not yet known okay something that is considered as unknown so when we say exploratory there is a particular nature that is not yet known and you want it to investigate for example let us say there is no known causes or known facts why teenagers love to view pornographic images or pornographic videos or pornographic materials in that way when you do investigation because you want to find out the underlying factors or underlying causes why teenagers love to view pornographic materials then what you are doing is what we call as exploratory okay 
exploratory research wherein the nature or the causes thereof is not yet well known. Descriptive research on the other hand is very simple. Okay? This is very simple. All you have to do is that all you have to do is to remember that in descriptive research it answers the four W's and one H. Okay? Sir, what happened? Ano pong ano pong nangyari sa sa panglima na W? Because usually we have five wives and one husband. Five W's, one one H. So In descriptive research, you only answer the four W's, the who, the what, the when, where. For example, who are much prone to commit criminality, the male or the female? Okay? What are the uh, what are the nature of crime committed by the male? When uh, when does kidnapping or carnapping usually happen? When at what particular time? Where does kidnapping happen? How does kidnapping happen? In that case, we call this one as descriptive research. You answer the four W's, the who, what, when, where, and the how. Question, sir. Saan po yung why? When you ask for the why, what type of research, research under, are you undertaking? If you want to answer the question of why, then what you are doing is what we call as explanatory research. So, what is explanatory research? Okay? So, when you say explanatory research, what you are doing is that you describe a phenomenon. Okay? For example, a crime. And uh, you want to you want to examine why people commit such a particular crime. Why do people commit kidnapping? Why do individuals resort to bullying? Why do husband batter their wife? We call it as explanatory research. Wherein do you answer the word? Why? When you answer the W such as who, when, what, and uh, uh, whom, when, what, and where, and how, you call it as descriptive research. But when you delve to the question of why, why people commit crimes, That shall be part of what we call as explanatory research. Okay? The last one is experimental. Experimental is very common because in experimental, what you do is you administer a particular stimuli or a particular stimulus to part- participant in a, controlled, uh, in a controlled environment. For example, like when you, you want to discover the... Uh, you want to discover whether... whether adolescents can be addict can be addicted to alcohol once they are exposed to once they are exposed to uh, per pressure or barcadas who are alcoholics so the stimuli or the stimulus that you introduce would be the alcoholic individuals and you tend to Uh, mix it with the guy who is not alcoholic and you want to find out whether the guy who is not alcoholic will adapt the same behavior if he is merged to the guys who are basically alcoholic in in nature so we call it as experimental research so those are again the types of researchers according to the level of investigation Now, if research is conducted in a very limited scope in order to solve a particular problem, you call it as action research. Take note again that action research is only very limited. Why is it limited? Because it does not provide exhaustive or very comprehensive investigation in all, okay, in all of the problems. But rather, it only focuses on one problem. For example, when you do fingerprint identification, there are problems you met along the way. So you want to find out the solution of that problem. So you conduct an action research. When you do crime scene investigation, and there is a pl- problem that you, you, you encounter along the way, and you want to find out the solution of that problem, in that case, you call it as an action research. Now, research can also be classified according to choice of answers or problems. Dalawa po ito. Una is evaluation research. Pangalawa is 
developmental research. Ano po ang pinagkaiba sa dalawa? When we say evaluation research, what you do is you want to find out uh, all possible courses of action are specified and identified and the researcher tries to find the most advantageous. For example, you want to evaluate um, criminologist professors according to number one, classroom management. Number two, teaching performance. You evaluate them uh, uh, in, in the indicator assessment. You call it as evaluation research. You want to find out the effectiveness of patrol. That is what we call as evaluation research. You want to find out the effectiveness of police community relation program in a particular police station. We call it as evaluation research. When you evaluate your instructor, when you evaluate police officers according to their programs, you call it as evaluation research. Deve developmental research is 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 the opposite okay in developmental research you do not evaluate a program but rather you develop okay you develop a program you develop a particular instrument so for example you want to develop you develop a a rehabilitation program for drug surrenders or you develop a a police community relation program we call it as developmental research. So, once there is a result or findings of the research and you develop an intervention plan, in that case, that can also be classified under developmental research. Take note, cadets, ang ilagay po sa isip natin in, in the study of research is that a particular study can be considered as developmental research at the same time, it can be considered as an action research or it can be considered as an applied research. Okay? So, the definition or the nature of the research would be dependent on what particular scope. Okay? Or what particular area. So, in this case, what we are discussing is about according or is according to the answer. All right? The answer to a particular uh, problem. To answer a particular problem. So, it could be evaluation or developmental. Now, in the later topics or in the later discussion, our main focus basically will be on according to statistical content or researches according to statistical content because this is what criminological research is all about. So, We'll be discussing what is quantitative, what is qualitative. Because according to statistical content, researches are only classified sa dalawa lang po. Una, quantitative. Pangalawa is qualitative. Now, what is the difference between the two? This is very simple to understand. When you heard the word quantity, okay? When you heard the word quantity, you should put in mind that it involves number. Okay? So, if a particular research involves statistical tool, so ang statistical tool? Ano po ba ang statistical tool? Statistical tool involves numbers. Okay? For example, you use, use chi-square in, in evaluating or in analyzing the data. Chi-square is a statistical tool. You use simple percentage to analyze the data. Simple percentage is a quantitative a statistical tool. In that case, since you use statistical tool, quantitative research. Okay? If you do not use statistical tool, you use interviews, you use um, case analysis, lived experiences, ano pong tawag? Qualitative research. It's very simple to understand between the two. When you use numbers in interpreting the data, when you use numbers again to interpret the data, quantitative. If you do not use numbers in interpreting the data, qualitative research. That's the difference between the two. Now, the last classification will be according to time element. Alright? Time element. So, when you say time element, that refers to the time, basically. 
So, research can be classified according to the time element as historical, descriptive, experimental. So, again, a while ago, we discussed about descriptive research. Ano po ba ang descriptive research? This refers to a research that answers the four W's and the one H. The when, the what, where, and who, and the how. Descriptive. Okay? Descriptive research. Experimental research, this is about introduction on a particular stimuli or stimulus. Okay? For example, again, when you mixed the non-alcoholic guy to the alcoholic barcada, and you want to find out whether the non-alcoholic guy will adapt the same behavior with the alcoholics. It's experimental research. So, historical describe what was. For example, you want to research about the, the, the legacy of Edwin Sutherland. Or the legacy of those persons who are uh, who are already dead, or you want to find out the happenings or the events in criminology before in the twenty in the twentieth century or in the nineteenth century. Historical research, descriptive research describes what is. Experimental research describes about the future. Okay, so again, according to the time element, past it's historical. Present, descriptive. Future, experimental researches. So, I hope, guys, I really hope that all of these researches, alright, all of these researches, according to different classifications, are, uh, are, are a, were able to sink in on the deepest portion of your brain so that when you take the board examination, I tell you, once you are familiarized with this one, once you are acquainted with this, names of researchers i tell you you will have uh, you will have uh, comfortability you will have uh, uh, no difficulty in answering the questions in the board examination okay so we will now proceed to the next topic which is a geographic and nomothetic explanation okay so in a geographic and nomothetic let us read the definition a geographic studies one case or instance to have an in-depth investigation of numerous factors to explain something, say, crime. However, put this in mind, since only one case is to be studied, the researcher is only capable of explaining such case and cannot use his findings to explain the other cases in other situations. So meaning, in a geographic you only study one particular case. But the results that you got from that research, because, because that only involves one case only, the results or the findings cannot be general, generalizable. When you say generalizable, meaning that cannot be applied to other group of people. The results or the findings cannot be applicable to to everybody or to other groups of people. While nomotheric on the other hand is the opposite. Because in a geographic, you only study one case. But in nomotheric, you study several cases. Okay? You study several cases and the result can be generalizable or can be applicable to a range or to many cases or to many group of persons. For us to understand, cadets, para maliwanagan po tayo sa kaibahan ng geographic and nomotheric. Okay? Let us take a look at the example. Okay? I put an example in here so that you will really understand. You will really understand the, the difference between the two. Because who knows, this will come out in the board examination. Let us start with the example in, in, in a geographic. Now, for example, the study of the case of Lomen, a battered married woman in Cebu City. Researcher used the case study method to discover the factors that contribute to the victimization of uh, victimization experiences of Lomen. Meaning, the researcher wanted to find out, okay, wanted to find out um, what factors that causes or what factors that cause for Lomen to be victimized by uh, by 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 the by by battery, okay, by physical injuries, basically, the focus on one woman 
provided him with very rich information about the experiences of lawmen before, during, and after the abuse. However, one pitfall, many will say one pitfall, this is a loophole or one disadvantage of his research is that his findings could not be generalized to other cases of battered women. In other words, what he discovered could not be used to explain the cases or other abuse married women in Cebu City. Why? Because there is only one case. What case is studied in this example? The case of low men. The case of one single woman, low men, a battered married woman in Cebu City. So if you only study one case, the results or the findings that you get from the research cannot be applicable. Okay, cannot be applicable to everybody. Why? Because one case cannot be something that could generalize an information. Alright? But if you use nomothetic, okay? In nomothetic, again, it's very opposite because you study several cases. Now, imagine the example in here. The survey methods to study 1,718 married women and 1,715 married men in Eastern India. The findings could be generalized to several cases, possibly even up to the whole population of married men and women in Eastern India. Why? Considering that you have biggest you have the big sample size, okay? You study several cases. And the several cases could be something that would serve as a representation of the whole population. So in nomotheric, because you have many or several cases, the results could be applicable to the general population. But in this case, in angiographic, in this example, one case is studied only. So the result cannot be applicable to, to everybody. When you do bibliography, for example, you want to find out why President Duterte waged war against drug addiction. So what you study would be narratology, the experiences or the story behind the war on drugs. There is only one, one case. So you cannot apply the findings that you got to the presidents in other countries whose, initi whose initiative are on war on drugs. Because in this case, what you studied is only one case and the case of President Duterte in his, in his war against, against, against drugs. So, so if the population or if the sample size is big and you were able to uh, successfully uh, get an effective or ideal sample size out from the general population in that case, the result uh, using that sample size could be applicable to the group or to the generalized, generalized population. Also in the board examination cadets in criminal sociology, this usually come out, okay? Inductive versus deductive reasoning. I tell you, this will really come out in criminal sociology. In the future board exam, um, these words usually appear in one of the questions. So let us, let us reacquaint again ourselves with, with uh, what is inductive and what is deductive. So I will also cite an example later on for us to understand the difference between, between the two. So let us, let us uh, examine this piece by piece. Now let us start with the, the with, let us start first with the definition. Now, when we say inductive, you go from specific details to general proposition. Okay? Details to general. Deductive is opposite because you go to general to specific proposition. So that's what we put in mind. Inductive, specific to general. Deductive, general to specific. Inductive again, inductive, general, uh, specific rather, specific to general, deductive, general to specific. Now, let's have an example. In inductive reasoning, let us take a look on criminal investigation. Now, after the investigator has collected evidence, for example, the weapon used, the weapon used, sample, uh, sample of blood, 
fingerprints and other tracing evidence, he learns that the weapon belongs to Juan de la Cruz and the samples of blood, fingerprints, and other tracing evidence match with that of Juan. The investigator then can speculate that Juan might be the one who has committed the crime. Note that the investigator begins from specific details and proceeds to a general proposition that Juan might have committed the crime. So, when you go to the evidence first, and when the evidence tells you that there is a prob strong probability or there is a, there is a uh, something that will tell you that Juan is guilty thereof, and you proceed with labeling Juan as the criminal or as the perpetrator of the crime, what you are doing is inductive. Asaman, saan po ba yung specific details? Specific details refers to the evidences you collected. You get the evidence first before you say that Juan is guilty of the crime or before you say that Juan was the person who committed the crime. Inductive. But in deductive, here is an example. A criminal prosecutor proceeds in the opposite way when they prosecute an accused in court. A prosecutor files an information, a written allegation in court. In this information, he or she alleges that the accused might have committed a crime. In trial, he or she presents evidence just to support his claim. Note that he or she goes from the general position that the accused might have committed the crime and proceeds to specific details which is pieces of evidences. Now take a look at the difference. Law enforcer or the criminal investigator, he started with a collection of evidence before he said that the person was the one who committed the crime, specific to general, inductive. Prosecutor, he thinks that the person is the criminal before he present the evidence. In that case, general to specific okay prosecutor he goes on labeling the person as the criminal and after that he present the evidence to prove that he was really the criminal in that case general because you label a person as criminal go uh, go into specific the specific there would be the presentation of evidence so general to specific is an example is uh, 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 is is what we call as deductive reasoning so i hope you understand the difference between the two now to add more inductive the researcher analyzes data and attempts to build a proposition or a theory but in deductive in deductive research in deductive reasoning the researcher analyzes the data to test a given theory that's the difference between the two now, in inductive, for example, you want to analyze the lived experiences of lived experiences of drug addicts or drug surrenders. Surrenders. In that case, you have the data, you analyze the data, then you propose a theory. You propose a particular uh, proposition. You have the particular proposition. But in deductive, you have the theory in place, and you want to test the theory okay you want to test you want to test the theory the researchers analyze the data to test a given theory for example again as what i have stated a while ago self-control theory you have the self-control theory and you want to test the 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 effectiveness of the theory you want to find out whether the theory the principle of the theory is correct or wrong in that case what you are doing is deductive reasoning or deductive research now, another term that usually come out in the board examination is what we call as research design. So, I think some of you is already familiar about this. So, when you say research design, uh, ibig sabihin, this is a blueprint or the skeleton of your study. So, just like when you build a house, you must have a plan. Okay? The plan is usually reflected in the blueprint. So, the plan would be the research design. Okay? So, when you design a study, you specify exactly who or what is to be studied, when, how, and for what purpose is what we call as research design. So, in the research design, in your plan, 
you must have the participants, the procedures, the instrument, and analysis of data, and of course, the ethical consideration. So, we call this one as research design. Now, in the conduct of research, sometimes, sometimes researchers faced with what we call various fallacies. Sometimes there are loopholes that are usually committed. One of these is what we call as individualistic fallacy. So, with individualistic fallacy, this occurs when one generalizes his or her observation about an individual to groups or organization. For example, when one hears from the news that a certain police officer has been found positive of using dangerous drug, it is a fallacy to generalize and say, I am afraid to report to the police station uh, drug crimes in my neighborhood. Uh, I am afraid to report to the police station drug crimes in my neighborhood because the police are even involved in the drug use. So basically, what is, what is reflected in this situation is that once you hear rumors about a police officer, you saw in television, one police officer doing the drugs, you tend to generalize it, generalize it to the whole police population. So this is what we call as individualistic fallacy. For example, based on the example a while ago about uh, nomothetic and uh, uh, no, nomothetic and geographic. For example, uh, again, on the case of Lomen, the, uh, the researchers studied about the case of Lomen in Cebu City. And Lomen is only a single case. So the, the findings in there, if you apply it to other battered women, considering that what you studied was the only case of Lomen, you, co you committed what we call as individualistic fallacy because you tend to generalize the information. So you do not, the, rule, the general rule of thumb is do not generalize an information, especially if you study one case only. But if you do it, you generalize it to other population, you committed a fallacy and you call it as individualistic fallacy. Another loophole usually committed by researchers, especially the researchers in criminology okay, or criminal justice. Like for example, we take a look on differential association, atavism, economic theories of crime. Most of these researchers committed reductionism, okay? So what is reductionism? This occurs when researchers try to disregard other units of analysis and concepts from other fields. This is sometimes the case of crime causation because the field of criminology is multifaceted or multidisciplinary. Example, some researchers may limit their focus on what tend to cause crime. For example, economists might only focus on cost and benefits. Conflict theory would suggest that the cause of crime or the cause of conflict is based on an equal or inequality of the distribution of resources in the community. In that case, you only focus on the economic side. Okay? You only focus on the economic side and you do not discount other factors that might uh, contribute to crime position. Biologists, on the other hand, might only focus on genetic influences, like for example, heredity theory. In heredity theory, especially if you take a look on the family trees, it states that criminal behaviors are inherited from the parent to the children. So, in that case, what is taking into consideration would be the heredity or the genes being endowed from the parents to the children as the factor that can cause criminality. But actually, there are a lot of, even if your parents are, are law-abiding citizens, there's a big possibility that the children can still become a law violator because again, there are a lot of factors that we can consider. We can consider the peer pressure. We can consider the, the, the environment where the, that person lives in. We can consider the sociological factors and other factors. But biologists usually focuses on biological 
uh, factors only. Sociolo- sociologists, on the other, might only focus on cultural factors like sociological uh, reductionism, ang tawag ane. So, kada nga mga reductionism is usually committed by a lot of researchers. When you only focus on a one particular, one single factor to explain a, part, a, a certain phenomena. So, again, you need to take a look on various factors before you come up with a conclusion or a findings. Now, another terms po na dapat nating i-review, okay, sa criminological research, posible po itong lalabas sa board examination, okay, in the future CLE. Ang tawag po nito is cross-sectional studies and longitudinal st- studies. Longitudinal studies. Ano po ang pinagkaiba ng cross-sectional studies and longitudinal studies? When we say cross sectional studies you collect data at one time okay or the data collected cover only one short period of time say one year two years city crime data by choosing the type this type of study researchers can save a lot of their time effort energy and of course money we call it as cross sectional why cross you only collect one data at one time okay while longitudinal studies you collect data from respondent over a long period of time or the data covers a long period of time so let us say 10 or more years so basically cross-sectional studies is more convenient more simple because you only collect data at one time while longitudinal, longitudinal studies might be very complex because uh, it takes a lot of time okay, on the part of the researcher to gather the data because basically longitudinal involves uh, a longer period of time. Now, ang longitudinal studies comprises various types. Okay? Number one is, we call it as trend studies. Ano po ba ang trend studies? It displays the changes of the frequency of an event over a long period of time. So, example ane is a city mayor. For example, a report from the chief of police showing the crime rate trend in the city to see the overall picture of crime in terms of 10 or 20 years. Okay? So, let us say you want to find out whether the the first, second, or the third year has similarity of uh, in terms of prevalence of crime or you want to find out whether there is an increase or decrease of, of, of crime rates from the first year, second year, third year, up to the 10th year, up to the 20th year. We call that one as trend studies. You go with the trend. When you determine the the trend of enrollment in the university, whether the enrollment is at its lowest level level or at its peak from from first year to the 20th year, in that case, what you, what you are doing is um, trend studies. Trend studies, again, is one of the types of longitudinal studies. On the other hand, another type of longitudinal studies is what we call as panel studies. So, mas lahi ang panel studies compared to trend because in trend you only go with the trend of course but in panel studies panel studies collect data from the same sample respondents for two or more periods of time two or more periods for example in the study of thornberry uh, and others they use the data collected in the wave two three and four of the study in wave two adolescents were interviewed in their eighth or ninth grade in wave 4, the same adolescents were interviewed in their 10th grade. So imagine, they were interviewed in their 8th to 9th grade, grade 8 and grade 9. When they reached grade 10, they were interviewed again. We call that one as panel studies. Okay? So basically, in trend studies, you go with a trend. Uh, whether it, there is an increase or decrease of population or crimes. But in panel studies, you interview you collect data uh, from two or more uh, more times. In this case, in my example again, they collected twice. 
in can they can they collected the uh, data uh through interview in the eighth or ninth grade and then after that the interview again when the adolescent uh, reached uh on the tenth grade on the other hand we also have the cohort studies now cohort studies research on specific subpopulation or cohorts from the word cohorts specific subpopulation okay put that in mind as the change over time this type of study is similar to panel study however one major difference is that in panel studies researcher researchers collect data from the same respondent over time while in cohort studies researchers collect from from another sample of cohorts for example let us say 2000 uh, uh let's say uh in the ninth grade you interview the adolescents okay now when the when the when this adolescents reached on the 10th grade and another group of adolescents filled the, the ninth grade you interview another adolescents okay we call this one as cohort studies when the the criminology cadets reached first year or are are in their first year and you interview them on their uh on their venture as a criminology cadet first year pa lang when they reach second year another group of people will be enrolling for first year so that another group of people you interviewed again another group so that another group is known as a cohort so in that case what you are doing is cohort studies but in panel studies the first year students interviewed uh during that time uh when they reach second year they will be interviewed again so we call that one as panel studies that's the difference between panel and cohort studies now um one thing that we have to note here is that some researchers do not have enough funding to conduct a longitudinal study which could possibly you know sometimes amount to millions or hundreds of thousands thus they resort to read retrospective studies to approximate longitudinal ones for example retrospective research ask people to recall their past okay ask people to recall their past like you want to find out their lived experiences on on bullying or oh, you call that one as uh, retrospective research you want them to recall on their previous experiences of bullying Now I would like to stop in this slide so that you will not be overloaded, okay? You will not be overloaded or overwhelmed with information. Now I will continue the discussion under episode two, but in episode two we will mainly be focusing on the type of researches according to statistical used or statistical method being used, particularly quantitative research and qualitative research we are not yet done with our review or discussion of criminological research and statistics so i would like to invite you there is a link at the description below you click it and you can find the discussion relative to quantitative researches and qualitative researches also there is a comment section that you can see below if you have questions guys cadets criminology students reviews from various regions in Mindanao, Visayas and Luzon. If you have questions, I would really be glad that you post something, okay? You can post at the comment section your questions. Then once I notice your questions cadets, I will give you time and really spare a time to answer these questions. Thank you so much and I hope you learned something from this uh from this uh uh discussion or from this Uh, review that we are doing right now. Thank you so much. God bless you and stay safe.